Hello and welcome. My name's Alex Clements. I head up the uh, witness familiarisation team uh, here at Bond Solon. Uh, I'm joined today by Paul Gilbert, a solicitor advocate and senior Bond Solon trainer, um, for a discussion around give me evidence uh, and what can be done to improve uh, witness performance. Uh, I want to start really by asking you what you consider to be the key challenges uh, facing individuals who are called to give evidence. I think the first one, and, and, and it's the obvious one, is, is nervousness. Most witnesses are, are very nervous about the prospect of giving evidence uh, and because th they know that they're walking into an environment that they're uh, unfamiliar with, most people haven't been inside a courtroom, their experience of, of, of courtrooms comes from watching uh, television dramas or, or in the movies. Uh, and it's, it's because they don't really know or understand properly what's going to happen, I think, that makes them um, nervous also. Then, of course, occasionally you've got the witness that is overconfident. Um, you know, they'll say to you, well, all I've got to do is uh, tell the truth, isn't it? It's as simple as that. And, and, and I'm afraid, whilst you, of course, should tell the truth, uh, it's not as simple as that. And what makes the actual, uh, I suppose, the actual process itself so difficult? I think primarily it's the cross-examination process, and in particular the use of what I call closed questions, questions where you're being confronted with a statement which you're being asked to agree or disagree with. But not only that, a series of these questions, which are, to use that analogy that's so commonly used, taking you down a path. Uh, and you know, this isn't the way we normally ask each other questions, so it's something that needs to be understood. And presumably, uh, an unprepared witness can break a case. Um, I mean, have you got any, any stories or anything you can share in that regard? Yeah, well, t two come to mind. Um, the, the first is an expert witness uh, giving evidence, a very high-profile extradition case. Uh, you could see uh, from the witness's demeanour that, that he was getting increasingly concerned and, uh, and indeed irritated and frustrated with the forensic nature of, of the questioning by the, the QC. But not only that, the QC had this um, habit or, or technique of, of, of making these sarcastic comments about um, the expert witness's answers. And uh, eventually the witness um, just flipped and sort of went, all I want is what's good for my patient, what's wrong with that? Uh, and really, you, you know, at that moment, his, his credibility went, I think actually, to be honest, he wanted the floor to swallow him up. The other one that, that comes to mind is a, is a fact witness um, who just was incapable of, of just answering the question. Uh, she had to make a point. In fact, actually, she had to make several points. Uh, and it really took all of the impact, all of the effect out of the answers that she was giving. And uh, it's referred to as witness familiarisation, um, what does that actually mean? So familiarisation is, is the term that uh, the courts have decided is uh, acceptable in terms of witness preparation, training, but, but it is a, a process of uh, helping the witness to understand uh, their part in uh, the process, uh, the, you know, the court hearing or, or, or the arbitration hearing but also getting an understanding of, of what the lawyer is trying to achieve in, in the cross-examination uh, so that the witness then knows what's the best way for the witness to do it. Great. And, I mean, you've been delivering witness familiarisation sessions for, for over 10 years now. Um, what are the, one of the benefits, really, that you've observed both, uh, I suppose, for the individuals attending, uh, but also any instructing parties? I think primarily it's, it's confidence. You see a witness um, gain confidence through the course of the training, uh, also become better at it, um, uh, and, and because of that um, understanding uh, how, how to give evidence uh, effectively. I think from the point of view of the uh, instructing solicitor, uh, it's getting an insight into how their witness is going to react to cross-examination, what are the key uh, reminders that the witness needs to be given just before they do actually go in to give evidence uh, so that they uh, are able to be as effective as they can be. And can you, can you give us a, a high level overview as to what a witness familiarisation session entails? So the training has two parts. First part is a, an explanation about what's involved in, in giving evidence. Um, so we cover issues around um, uh, the way questions are going to be asked, um, how to deal with with those questions, 
what happens when you give evidence, the different stages that you go through, uh, preparing effectively for giving evidence, uh, and uh, importantly, cross-examination, and in particular cross-examination uh, lawyers' techniques. Uh, and then, uh, if you like, that's the theory, then you have the practice, the mock cross-examination that, that we do, uh, very often using a case study. Uh, which enables the witness to experience cross-examination, uh, to get an understanding about um, how uh, the witness reacts to it, uh, but also for, for me to then help them to uh, improve uh, by giving them feedback, making suggestions for things, things that, for them to try out, uh, which they can then do to see if, if they work for them. Yeah, I suppose you don't want to just jump straight into cross-examination without having already um, gone through the theory behind it? No, you, you, you don't, because um, apart from anything else, you probably um, make them even more nervous uh, than they are. Uh, but also, in, in properly understanding the um, feedback, they sort of need to have the theory. Uh, and so it's important from that point of view as well. Uh, and of course, with the pandemic, um, we've seen a rise in the use of virtual hearings. Uh, do you consider there to be any differences in the way witnesses are prepared there? Certainly, a, a virtual hearing has uh, a different uh, dynamic. From the witness's point of view, they're going to go through the same process they go through uh, if they were giving evidence uh, in person. But uh, you, you do uh, have a situation where the environment is different. Uh, so the witness, for example, may be giving evidence from home. Uh, that means that arrangements need to be made so that the witness uh, is on their own. Uh, and certainly there have been situations where judges have required witnesses to demonstrate that they're sitting in a room on their own. My recommendation, if it's possible, is the witness goes and gives evidence at the offices of the uh, solicitors. There's also uh, issues around the use of documents, um, whether they're uh, in paper for the witness or whether they're put up on uh, the screen. But certainly uh, all of these issues we will look at and consider in the course of the training uh, and adapt the training accordingly. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, Paul. It's been a pleasure uh, and for sharing some of your insights. Uh, and naturally, if Bon Solon can be of assistance in the future, please do get in touch.